Hey everyone, it's Antonio from Buckeye Nation. Um, so this week I'm going to be bringing a video. It's going to be talking a little bit about what it means to be fair play, and it's a little bit of a war recap as well. Uh, recently I had Menzo filling in. He he talked about some Town Hall 9 bases um, and you know base building and, and how to do that. So that could definitely help you guys out if you're struggling as a Town Hall 9 to build a good base or, uh, or you're getting wrecked constantly. Uh, definitely would look at that video and then we also had Al Hefe fill in for me on uh the war against beer goggles and uh he's a he's a pretty goofy dude he's pretty funny um I consider myself pretty funny but I'm pretty monotonous when I'm doing these videos pretty dull I bore myself to death but I'm just gonna chug along hopefully you guys enjoy it but I definitely check out those two videos definitely worth viewing uh we just recently we're on a 16 win streak. We had some notable victories. Beat FYSB, which I covered. Uh, Beer Goggles, which El Jefe covered. And then we had Tactical Inc. over here. Very good clan. Um, unfortunately, no one covered that war. Uh, both of us were busy, so weren't able to. And then that brings us to these two back-to-back -back losses we had. Um, so let's take a look at them. And uh, we're just going to go over them. So this loss was to a Korean clan. Um, you check out their you know, bio, it's going to say their fair play clan, no X mod. Uh, so apparently that's what they consider to be a fair play clan. Uh, we, we look at the matchup and um, we start looking through it and we just see Town Hall 11 after Town Hall 11 after Town Hall 11. Uh, you can't see it here obviously because all these bases are destroyed. So I'm going to start bringing you down to a few. Um, I think they had about 12 more Town Hall 11s than us. But I'm only counting about 6 of them. Because they either had max heroes or max troops and were able to attack up. So you see their number 37 right here. He is their 37 terrible base, which I'm going to show you in a second. He was able to attack up our 14 and 15. He wasn't able to clear PG. He has level 1 Infernos, but still a very good base design. Uh, but he was able to 3-star Clyde Frog. He's their number 37. He's jumping up 23 spots. So clearly, I mean, that's that's absolutely ridiculous. So I'm going to show his base real quick. Um, and just talk about what I view as fair play. So this is what you call an engineered base. For those of you that don't know, you're essentially giving up all defensive capabilities to give yourself a huge offensive advantage. Uh, you can see his heroes aren't super strong. Uh, 27, 15, 15 at the time of war. Um, but he does have the max troops needed to clear Town Hall um, 10 bases with like the boner style attack. Uh, you see max miners here, max bowlers, and then that whiz, uh, not the wizard, the uh, Grand Warden, which his Eternal Tomb ability is huge um, in the kill squad portion of the attack or if you're even following the miners with it um, it can prevent um, giant bombs from affecting anything any portion of your attack it's definitely huge and a huge advantage so I'm going to bring you to 39 as well and this is basically a full-on engineered base heroes are terrible 11-11 um, but he does have max troops you can see Miners here, he's going to have bowlers as well, so that gives him a huge advantage. Uh, like I said, they had six countable Town Hall 11s on us that we didn't have, which gives them 12 more um, total Town Hall 11 techs, and I think they had like another eight more Town Hall 10s on us. It was just just a ridiculous matchup, and, and if you see this, you actually see we, we beat them by percent. Um, we did not beat them on overall stars. We had a couple mistakes in the war. Uh, a couple attacks up top that we actually could have three-starred their Town Hall 11 bases. Uh, we had, I think, two people miss their AQ ability, which would have done it. And just some overall, you know, small small misses on these attacks. And just things just didn't go our way. We, we really had this war in our hands, and we should have won it. Uh, came down to a final attack on base one. We went for a three star. Uh, we shouldn't have even been in that position. We should have had two more stars previously. And uh, went for a three star attack instead of like a safe two and only able to get a one star on it and got like an 80 something percent one star. 
So I'm going to bring you a couple attacks here. Uh, first one was against 11. We had Mark attack it. He is one of our, he's our newest co-leader. He's a great attacker, real good guy in our clan. Um, and he is a new Town Hall 11. So we had two people attack this base previously and fail. One person started at 6. Let me pause this. One person started at 6. We are able to get up here. But right next to this gold storage here, he had like uh, three giant bombs and he had some by the expo. So your kill squad was able to take out the one inferno but just got wrecked immediately. Uh, and then you don't have enough room to work with for your miners to get around. And so we had a fail there. Then we had another person attack from this side. And it's just such a wide um, compartment that some of the troops started wandering and it just didn't work out either. So Mark and I were talking and I told him, why not attack from the north? Bring your troops down the gut and you're going to be able to take out um, an inferno tower and start running through the space. And, and there's the giant bombs are all at the bottom, so you should be fine. Uh, Town Hall 10 could have done this with the same strategy because he just destroyed this space. Um, really good attack. I mean, he had great execution on his his part uh, for this base. You see the miners are going to come in the side. You had the bowlers coming down. They were just destroying everything in their path. Um, he's going to have a ton of bowlers left, and he's going to have these miners just going down the side here. They're going to sneak up on the Inferno Tower soon, and they're going to take that out. He's able to rage them. And uh, rage miners and bowlers are just very powerful so he gets through this base just fast forward it and uh, he has a spell to spare but I, th I think he ends up using it he doesn't even need to use it oh, he's probably going to swag drop it yep there you go so he had no difficulties with that base um, let me bring you to 13 we had Rod take on this base he had a pretty cool attack here. You don't really see many air attacks at Town Hall 10 anymore. Um, but this guy had some exposed air defenses. So he's going to start you know, funneling at the bottom with minions. He's going to do a queen walk here. Fast forward a bit. So he's going to take out this bottom AD here. And his goal is to take out some ADs. The queen and the uh, clan castle here. Which he's able to do. Almost had them those loons drop on him, drop uh, their bombs on him, which would have messed him up pretty good. Um, then he's going to bring his king here. It's easily going to take out this air defense and then follows up with some clan castle bowlers. Um, and he's going to get a nice chunk out of this base just with this kill squad here. Um, I think he's able to take out this inferno up top and just took out two air defenses. So he's in great shape here. He's going to drop his hound at the bottom, start fast forwarding a bit, a couple haste spells, and uh, he's in the clear. His his AQ is at max health, so you I mean, when your AQ is at max health and you have the infernos down like this and all these troops left, you know you're golden. So, great attack, very smart attack, because a lot of people are giving up their air, um, air defense abilities to try and prevent from boner attacks and bowler attacks. So let's check out 14. It was Clyde Frog. And he's going to use the classical boner attack where he's going to use uh, two golems to funnel. Or, or some whiz to funnel, but he's going to have two two golems to take uh, any damage, he's going to have followed up with some bowlers. Uh, you see some wizards on the side here to try and keep his troops central. So they start to wander, but then they're going to turn back around and get back inside there. Takes out the clan castle, which you need to do. You see his, his golems are both still full health. And uh, coming through here. Oop. He's able to take out this... Inferno, which is really what you need, and instead he uses a freeze here. A lot of people use a jump, three heals, and a rage. He opted to keep out the jump and use a freeze, which I don't think it played a big role, but, I mean, he gets it done, so I guess it was a smart choice. 
So, great attack by Clyde on this one. Takes out that base. And you're going to see uh, Jarek's attack, which I think it was just kind of a goofy attack. I, I don't know how he was able to pull it off with the way he started. He uses five lightning spells right on this air defense, which doesn't really make sense to me. Or maybe drop down the archer tower, because it's not needed. You see everything clears out, and there's still like 10 more lightning strikes. Uh, he could have easily saved like two more spells there. Um, but, I mean, it worked out for him, so it was kind of a bizarre start to the attack. Uh, you see him funneling right now with his his Barbarian King and that uh, Baby Dragon, just so he could take out this Inferno, and he does a good job of it. You saw him rage that uh, BK a little early when the um, Archer Queen started walking up, and that was just to take out some of this perimeter garbage so that she didn't get distracted by it and start following him, which was very smart of him to do. So now he's dropping his poison spells on uh, these minions, and then the attack just starts up. A ton of loons coming in here from the top. Very weak air defenses. Like I said, people are giving up their their defense um, for aerial attacks to try and prevent against any ground attacks because they're so prevalent now. So... That's essentially the attack. And I'll just bring like one Town Hall 9 into play here. Um, Matt, he, he sticks with the basics. Uh, Matt is a very efficient attacker. A lot of people are trying to get fancier with their attacks or try new strategies. Uh, I mean, he's just very efficient with the with the standard here, um, with the, just the Goho. And then the Clan Castle, he's going to use bowlers. He does that all the time. And gets three stars all the time using it. So, I see him go up in the middle here. Has some bowlers falling along, rages them, and then just a ton of hogs. He always packs, you know, 20 plus hogs, and it works. I mean, hogs are hogs are excellent if, if they're deployed properly. And I'm only showing this video just because people are pretty much doing, uh, you know, stoned the stone goho attack and and the bowler attacks now and they're just trying to get away from simple attacks that are still very effective if they're used properly like this one was he ends with like you know 15 of his 22 or something like that um hogs left so it was a great attack and then it's just a clean up so that's all i'm really going to replay for this war like i said i mean we go into a war like this and you, you already get like almost defeated mentality we knew we were in this, the whole war, uh, just a couple things didn't go our way, but, they, you know, they claim fair play, you gotta think to yourself, is that really fair play? You know, originally, I used to think a few months ago, yeah, that's the smart way to do things, have an engineered base, um, I never did it personally, but I was, had no problems with it, but then you start thinking about it, and it's like, uh, going to, say you're in a, you know, a U UFC fight, that's, uh, Everyone loves watching UFC now. What if your opponent starts off with brass knuckles? You can still win, but they have a huge advantage going into it. Or, or since this is more of a mental game, what about a playing chess and, you know, the queen is the most important unit in chess. Uh, it can move essentially all over the board. If you replace your two knights, which are the horse pieces, can only move in an L pattern shape. Um, and you replace them with two more queens and you replace your rooks with two more queens. That's essentially what these engineered bases are. It's giving you this huge advantage. So no, they're not using XMOD. And that's great because I just hate people that use XMOD. But at the same token, it's it's not fair. It's not a fair game. It's it's a huge advantage that you get to start with at the beginning of war. And it's, it's pretty ridiculous. So that brings you to like uh, point fives. And some people can criticize, and we, we do have point fives. We have a number of point fives. Um, some people can criticize and say, well, how is that fair then? Well, you got to take into account what um, offensive capabilities that point five it has. So, for instance, myself, I am a Town Hall 9.5. I start off with like 17 17 heroes, which was just the dumbest thing I could have done. Um, made the upgrade. Now I have. 
3125, and I'm upgrading some defenses. I upgraded my Teslas. I'm doing my Archer Towers now. I'm going to start doing my Expos soon. And once I get heroes both above 30, I'm going to start dropping Infernos. And my, my offensive troops are still not done. I'm still working on spells. I still have a couple more to go. I have my miners and bowlers done, which is great. But I still have a couple more to go. Some people could say, you know, you're being a hypocrite right here by having this base. I don't really see it that way because, you know, you have to have some offensive capabilities first. You shouldn't be expected as soon as you drop to Town Hall uh, or jump to Town Hall 10 that you should just automatically be dropping these Infernos. We have a member in our clan, let me see, named Matrix. He literally just talked to me five minutes ago about this. And you see his profile, he just made the jump to Town Hall 10. He has no offensive capabilities. He has Town Hall 9 heroes, and he has no bowlers, no miners. And he asked me, should I drop my Infernos right now? And I said, no, you shouldn't, because now you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. And... And it just doesn't make any sense to do that. Why would you put yourself at such a huge disadvantage? You're not capable of taking out Town Hall 10s um, because you're Town Hall 9, essentially. Once you start getting up higher into it, then, yeah, you should be dropping Infernos, dropping an extra um, can in Archer Tower and Expo. But for the time being, I don't think it's necessary. As long as you don't pass your offensive capabilities um, where they're exceedingly ahead of your defensive capabilities i think it is okay to go 0.5 for the time being but once you start getting above above 30 heroes you maybe 35 heroes and you start having some pretty powerful troops at your disposal then that's when i think it is you know you should be making the jump to full on town hall 10 otherwise it's not fair play so let's bring up the uh next next war here Devil's Fury, uh, they seem like a good group, I, we didn't really talk much, but uh, they seem like a good group of guys, but it's it's similar matchup, um, we came into it, they had, I believe, three more, or f no, they had four more Town Hall 11s than us, so that's eight more Town Hall 11 attacks than us, and like four or six more Town Hall 10 attacks than us, we also had uh, LSU fan here, he had his Warden down, because he's a new Town Hall Eleven doesn't have uh, the eagle up yet, so we said, you know, why not? You can put it down uh, and be in war with us, and that really that helps screw us over too. I'm not blaming him in any way because we approved it, but uh, being down that many attacks at Town Hall Eleven is just ridiculous, and it really cost us this war. Uh, this war was just terrible. It was a mess for us all the way through. Um, you know, they they're a pretty well known. Uh, they say fair play clan, but, you know, I, I still don't think that's fully fair play. You don't count spying as fair play. It's within the parameters of the game is what, you know, people will say. As long as it's within the realm of the game and you're not using, um, you know, exterior products like XMOD or IMOD, then it's fair play. Well, you're not supposed to be snap, you know, snapping people's bases at the same time. That's not fair play either. But, uh, so, so we're taking a look at their 30, um, I accidentally paused the video, so I'm not really sure where I'm at. But uh, he does have Town Hall 9 heroes, but max miners and max bowlers at the same time. Um, so he's essentially a Town Hall 10. But defensively, you take a look at his base, and I mean, it's a very weak base. Obviously, you're going to be getting taken out first hit, but he's able to attack up or easily clear any Town Hall 9 he wants. Um, but like I said, I mean, this was a terrible war, just nothing went our way. And I'm, you know, sounds like I'm just making excuses. They, they, they won the war, but we just did not do our best. Uh, and it was very unfortunate for us. I mean, you would see some of our attacks, everything would go right until one minor mishap and it would just cost us the entire attack or, or they'd attack us and, they would use a boner attack, and they didn't take out our clan castle or heroes, yet somehow their miners were able to just chug along and take the rest of the base out. Very discouraging. Um, terrible war on our part, and really upsetting war, but I'll take a look at maybe two attacks on the on the bases. So we had Edial attack up. 
Um, he's a Town Hall 10. And uh, we told him to attack up, so we have a Town Hall 11 attack to go lower. And uh, that's what he did. He does a good job here. He's going to use a little Queen Walk action on this 9 o'clock side. And it's going to start bringing up towards 12 o'clock. Fast forward a bit. Doesn't use many baby drags, which a lot of people do a baby um, when they're attacking up. Puts down the jump here. Uh, he needed that that jump there for the extra percentage because um, his some of his troops didn't go exactly where he wanted. That's what he was saying. Um, but he was able to get a 54% here. So it was a pretty good attack overall, I guess. So good job, Edial. There's not really much else I want to show in this war. It was pretty bad for the most part. We had Messi attack number five, which is essentially a max Town Hall 10, a uh, couple Town Hall 11 upgrades on here. And uh, he's going to use a bowler attack, uh, pretty much a bowler spam, but bowler spams still work. A lot of people aren't are trying to shy away from them. We do a lot of minor attacks now, um, but the bowler attacks are still very feasible on certain bases, even with the uh, seeking air mines able to take out your healers now and everything. Uh, so let's fast forward a bit. And yeah, he just tears through the gut and, and swings around again and uh, everything clears out the rest of the base. So he has a ton of bowlers left and his heroes are going to be in full health once that healer gets on him. But uh, good attack by Messi here. There wasn't too many other bright spots in this war. It was, you know, very discouraging. And that's not taking anything away from Devil's Fury. Um, they're, they're a good clan. I mean, their attacks were pretty pretty good. Um, but like I said, when you're coming into a war where your opponent just has this huge advantage right out the gate, it's just, it just kills you. I mean, there's not much you can do about it. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of these clans will consider themselves elite fair play clans, but... Are you really elite if you're, if you need this kind of advantage to uh, beat your opponent? I mean, that's just my take on it. it. Sounds like I'm just crying about these two matchups. Uh, you guys take from it what you will, but uh, it's something to think about if that's really fair play or not. Um, so yeah.